So when you take fiber, fiber is fermented at the end of a digestion in the colon by bacteria and the bacteria is converting that fiber to short chain fatty acids and then the short chain fatty acids in turn are feeding our epithelium, they are feeding the colon. So there are scientists who argue that if you don't eat fiber, you don't make butyrate which is a short chain fatty acids and if you don't take, make butyrate, you will destroy the lining of your gut. So what happened to those? So when they ate this diet, what happened to the fecal concentration of these important fatty acids? So I have butyrate out here, low carb diet went down from 18 to 14 significantly. The total amount of fatty acids went down quite a bit, uh, 102 to 86. And when you look at the fecal excretion, it was also low. But in the high carb group, of course, there was no change in the amount of fatty acids that were produced either when you measured it in the gut or in the feces. But at least by this strategy, you can see that these beneficial bacteria went down in the low carb diet and high numbers of these bacteria are considered to be important for the health of your colon. Is there a problem with eating, eating too much protein? Because by the end of this talk, I want you to respect your stomach acid. Stomach acid is highly important for you to break down protein. If you don't have enough stomach acid because you take PPIs, you are old, you are having acid reflux. So if you have these factors, you should cook your protein well because you need to absorb it. You don't want a protein that is not broken down to get into the colon because undigested protein will be used by the bacteria and instead of making if you want to eat rare meat you better be very young you better be making a lot of stomach acid and you better be eating very little because otherwise that meat if you make it a habit is going to increase your bacterial content or you're going to have higher breakdown products of protein so when you break down protein in the colon you make what is called branch chain uh, fatty acids. They make ammonia, they make hydrogen sulfide, they make phenols, and these are potential carcinogens, potential toxins, and fermentation of protein in your colon can cause all of this. In addition, it gets absorbed, and you then excrete phenols and chrysols in your urine. So 91 individuals, low carb, high carb, there was no change in fecal branch chain amino acids. In other words, these people did not eliminate too much fatty acids from protein. There was no increase in urinary phenol or cresol, so that means they were not absorbing too many breakdown products. But perhaps it's important to read this. No evidence that higher protein intake was associated with increased levels of potentially deleterious protein fermentation products. Energy restriction may have not enhanced the functional efficiency of small intestines, increasing the absorption of available protein. So in other words, they did such a good job at it, they ate so little that all the protein was absorbed by the small intestines, very little protein got into the colon.